Okay, good morning from me as well. And thank you very much for the invitation, Kostadinos. Very glad to be here. Okay, so this is the first technical presentation as well. I will talk about this wireless power communication in the era of 6G. I will try to introduce you to this new technology and um, overview some recent uh, results by following mainly this multi-layer approach. So this is the outline. The first part is just an introduction, the basic background. I will introduce the technologies and the concept of wireless power communication. The second part is more uh, research. I will highlight several very recent uh, research results, which refer to five design layers. And finally, some conclusions and some ideas for future work. So wireless power transfer is a new technology which allows to deliver power wirelessly, without wires actually, through a dedicated electromagnetic field. This is the idea. We have um, a device which uh, broadcasts RF signals, or in the general case, generate an electromagnetic field and devices which harvest this energy. In contrast to the ambient energy harvesting, the process is continuous, stable, fully controlled, and therefore can be used for application with more strict quality of service constraints. Um, wireless power transfer can be realized with three technologies, inductive coupling, magnetic resonance, and electromagnetic radiation. The first two are near field work for very short distances are very sufficient, but the drawback is a very short distance. On the other hand, electromagnetic radiation is less efficient, but can achieve longer distances. So in this presentation, I will focus in the last technology. This is the concept. We have some devices with broadcast RF signals, of course, through antennas and some other devices uh, equipped also with antennas which capture this electromagnetic radiation. Uh, can achieve longer distances. This is the basic uh, characteristic and also provide some other positive uh, characteristics such as small form factor in comparison, for example, with the coils where we need space. Um, this technology can be implemented, integrated in sensor network, in mobile phones, in very small devices. Also, we can support flexibility, uh, multicasting, environments with mobility environments with line of, sight, line of sight and non-line of sight theoretically, and also easy implementation in wireless communication, where by default we have RF signals. On the other hand, we have some challenges. First challenge is the low efficiency due to, to path loss mainly, and also safety issues since we have propagation of waves. Uh, there is some industrial interest already in some products in the market, for example, Powercast or Rosia, uh, some um, some already applications in the market. And very recently, there is a new work group in 3GPP. It's called 3GPP Passive Internet of Things, which exactly focus on the technology for electromagnetic wireless power transfer. Application of interest, wireless sensor networks, consumer electronics, Internet of Things, RF, IT, tags, and so on. Um, the fundamental block for the implementation of this technology is the rectenna, rectifying antenna, which, as you can see, consists of some basic blocks. The first block is the antenna, which captures electromagnetic radiation. Here is modeled as a, a volt source in series with impedance. Then we have the matching network, which match the antenna's impedance to the rectifier and uh, maximize the energy which is transferred by the antenna to the, the rectification circuit. Then we have the rectification circuit. Of course, we have many topologies here, but for the low power regime, low power regime, a single diode is uh, sufficient. And finally, we have a low pass filter which removes the harmonics and provides a smooth DC power to the output. In order to design techniques for wireless power transfer, we need a mathematical model for this circuit. And the key challenge here is we like something simple, but in the same time accurate. There are two basic models in the literature, the physics-based diode model, where using circuit analysis, we express the current at the output of the circuit as a function of the received signal. And using here some Taylor's expansion, probably there is some problem with the, with the PDF, I think. Yeah, some, some mathematics here are not correct. Ah, okay. Uh, so here is the sum of the even moments of the received signal. And by truncating this sum to the first two terms, we have the linear and the nonlinear uh, model respectively. The other category of models is the, uh, the curve feeding diode model, where we approximate the behavior of the diode with a parametric nonlinear function. Most of the cases is a sigmoidal function. And using curve feeding tools, we can optimize the parameters accordingly. Um, just a note here, the second model uh, refers to a specific waveform, to a specific signaling uh, excitation signal, 
while the first is more general. So in case that you would like to study waveform design, we need to study the, the first uh, model. Something that is very particular for wireless power transfer is that signals with high peak to average power ratio are good for wireless power transfer. So signals like multi-sign, OFDM, chaotic signals that normally are problematic and are characterized by high uh, P, uh, P, peak to average power ratio are good for wireless power transfer. The reason is that this type of signals are uh, characterized by, high, by some periodic uh, high energy peaks. And this peak facilitates to turn on the diode and charge the capacitor in a very high level. Therefore, if the capacitor uh, then is discharged very slowly, we can have um, DC power at the output which is close to the peak. In comparison, for example, to a continuous wave, where, as you can see, we can achieve a lower power. On the other hand, this type of signals is very sensitive to nonlinearities. Therefore, if we would like to convey information as well, this could be catastrophic. There is a nice trade-off here that will be discussed later in my presentation. Um, in wireless power transfer, of course, there is not the notion of information, just we will try to convey energy. If this technology is integrated in wireless communication, of course, we have a coexistence of information and energy flows. RF is used to convey energy, information, or both, and this generates a new communication paradigm which is called wireless power communication and appear in the literature with two uh, key architectures. The first one is the WPCN, Wireless Power Communication Network, where information and energy are transmitted using orthogonal channels. And channels, I mean frequency bands or time slots. Of course, due to orthogonality, there is a trade-off between them. But on the other hand, due to the orthogonality, we can maximize the waveform for each mode separately. And we have some uh, different uh, specific network architectures here. For example, here is with separate information energy transmitter or collocating information energy transmitters. Um, the second key network architecture is SWIFT, simultaneous wireless information and power transfer, where information and energy are transmitted simultaneously through the same waveform. But again, here we have um, uh, an issue. The same waveform or, or the same design generally cannot maximize both simultaneously. Therefore, there is a trade-off between information and energy, and performance is given in terms of a region, of information energy region, which is the closure set of all achievable information and energy uh, tuples. This trade-off depends on the several, several parameters, for example, the input distribution of the transmitter side, the modulation, the waveform, the precoding in case that we have multiple antennas. And for this specific network architecture, where the receiver extract information and energy simultaneously from the same waveform, we will have a trade-off which depends also on the receiver architecture or the signal processing that the, uh, is used on the receiver side. Um, although, let's say, information theory studies assume that from the same signal we can get information and energy simultaneously, this can be, cannot be done without losses. Therefore, therefore, we have some practical architectures. The time switching, where the receiver switches in time, so one fraction of time get energy, another fraction get uh, information. Due to orthogonality, of course, we can optimize the waveform. On the other hand, we have power splitting, where the signal is split into parts. One is uh, to, uh, for information, the other for energy. Or in case that we have multiple antennas, we can um, uh, this, uh, split the antennas into these joint groups. One to get information, one to get energy. But the one issue for all this architecture is that they use some active uh, elements to get information. So we need classical RF chains, conversion from the RF to baseband, which increase the complexity is not in line with the low power that normally characterize the wireless power transfer techniques. Um, therefore, we would like to convey information without acti active elements at the receiver side. One example of this uh, architecture is the energy uh, in the integrated receiver. As you can in the, in the integrated receiver, we have only passive elements, the diode, the low pass filter, and at the output, we get some samples in order to detect information. Of course, we need in this case, the signal to be one dimension. So the source transmit energy pulses where information is embedded at the amplitude. But this is just an example where we achieve swept with passive elements at the receiver side. Um, Swift and wireless power transfer in general is a key um, technology which uh, study at the University of Cyprus in my research team. In 2018, I granted the ERC uh, consolidated grant for the project Apollo, where we study the problem for multiple layers. 
The first layer is the mathematical modeling, mainly using circuit analysis and mathematical tools. We express mathematical model to understand the behavior of the circuit and the non-linearities that exist in the practical world. world. Once the um, mathematical model is established, in the second layer, we study the fundamental limits using information theory. We study, for example, the um, information energy fundamental trade-off and the associated input distribution for basic network uh, structures, such, for, for example, here, the MAC channel. Inspired by, by the fundamental limits in the next layer, which is the core layer, the signal processing aspect, we study waveforms, modulation, percoding techniques, or novel shift architectures. In the next layer, uh, we study the problem from a macroscopic standpoint, from a system level standpoint. So we study the integration of this technology to complex networks, such as cellular or the ad hoc sensor networks, by taking into account their randomness in the location. And finally, some results are implemented in our uh, lab using mainly the, our experts in software-defined radio. And this is an effort to close the gap between theory and experimental work. Okay, so in the second part, which is more technical, I will try to present you several uh, examples which refer to the five layers that I just mentioned. And the first layer is the mathematical modeling. The example here is the RC filter design for wireless power transfer. The RC filter is an essential block in Rectena, actually removes the harmonics and defines the harvesting bandwidth from one side, but on the other side, controls the ripple at the output. Let's see here an example. The diode is a nonlinear circuit, so therefore at the output we have multiple harmonics, and the low-pass filter tries to remove the harmonics. A higher frequency cut frequency allows more harmonics to participate in the harvesting process, so we expect uh, to boost the harvesting, but from the other side, we increase the ripple, and of course the ripple is a never negative factor for the um, real applications. Therefore, there is a trade-off, and although this trade-off has been experimentally uh, proved, there is not any mathematical um, discussion. So here we try exactly to fill this gap and we propose a mathematical framework. Uh, unfortunately, the maths here uh, are, are a mess, so I, I cannot really follow the discussion, but I will give you just the basic message. I think is a problem of PDF. So here we propose a mathematical framework to um, understand this uh, behavior that just uh, mentioned. Uh, we we use a fundamental tool, which is the uh, Fourier series. We assume a sine wave signal. The diode is approximated by a nonlinear function, either it's full, uh, full or, or half wave. Um, the massive uh, network, if it is perfect, operates like a passive uh, um, amplifier, where the amplification factor is a function of the RC filter. At the output of the rectifier, the signal is periodic, so we can write it in a Fourier SRE, and we can find closed form expressions for the um, coefficients. We integrate the RC filter, and finally, after this mathematical analysis, we have a closed form expression for the voltage at the output. Uh, based on this closed form expression, which integrates the impact of the RC, we can uh, mathematically find the ripple and the DC voltage. And some very interesting asymptotic results. If the cutoff frequency go to infinity, so all the harmonics participate in the harvesting, we have the peak, we have the maximum harvesting, but the maximum ripple. On the other side, if the cutoff frequency go to zero, we have zero DC power at the output. So this is a very interesting remark because most of the time in the literature, they assume an infinity capacitor, but as you can see here, this assumption just gives a zero voltage at the output. Uh, some results, uh, let's focus just in the first figure, is uh, the voltage at the output as a function of the time for different, different cutoff frequencies. And as you can see here, a higher cutoff frequency provides a higher energy harvesting, but maximum ripple. And with this mathematical framework, exactly we can study this uh, uh, trade-off and design RC filters for wireless power transfer. So just this was an example about the work that we are doing in the circuit uh, uh, layer. The second layer is the fundamental limits. Here we use math, uh, mainly information theory tools to understand the fundamental uh, limits. The example here that I selected is shipped with power uh, amplifier nonlinearities. As I said in my introduction, signals with high, high peak to average power ratio are good for wireless power transfer, but on the other side uh, are sensitive to power amplifier nonlinearities and are catastrophic in case that we would like to convey information as well. So we would like to study this information energy capacity region and the associated input distribution when 
high power amplifier nonlinearity linearities are taken into account. Let's see the system model. We have a transmitter, an information receiver, an energy receiver. The channels are constant, so the setup is like Gaussian. The source transmit a real pump signal without uh, generality, without loss of generality. I mean, xk here is the uh, real uh, random variables with a distribution function of x. The source is uh, characterized by two power constraints, an average power constraint and peak power constraints, where a is the peak amplitude. Um, the energy harvesting is nonlinear. Here we use this diode uh, model, and harvesting is a, is a proportional here to Bessel function. Unfortunately, it's not very clear the equation. And finally, the retransmitter side, we uh, embed uh, Hauer power amplifier nonlinearity. Specifically, we use a uh, nonlinear uh, memorialized, I mean, uh, uh, model, which is the solid state power amplifier, where the output is a nonlinear function of the received signal. Uh, it's not very clear. And here you can see the, the characteristic function of the power amplifier. Uh, beta is the smoothness of the amplifier. AES is the saturation lever. And as beta increase, uh, the nonlinear part becomes more uh, linear. So this is the characteristic function of the amplifier. So to be able to understand them and characterize the fundamental limits, we study two extreme cases. In the first case, we assume that the information receiver is not present. In this case, we try to maximize the harvesting uh, process um, given the two uh, power constraints. We can prove that this um, um, is uh, convex and can be uh, solved also in closed form. And the associated input distribution is binary or ternary. Um, in case that is binary, the two extreme mass points are in the corner. The exact location depends on the power constraints. In case that is ternary, there is always a mass point at the zero. So we have closed form expression for the mass probability function uh, that maximizes the harvesting uh, energy. On the other side, we study the other extreme. We try to maximize the mutual information given the two power constraints. This problem, of course, with some um, modification here has been studied by Smith in 1971. And we know that the solution is uh, discrete, is uh, finite and, and unique. Um, and we just follow with this systematic mathematical framework of, of Smith. Um, and very interesting remark here is uh, for very low A, A I, I recall you is the peak uh, power constraint. Um, the distribution become binary. And the same distribution also maximize the energy harvesting process. And therefore, we prove that for very low peak power constraints, there is no trade-off between information transfer and energy transfer, which is very interesting remark. On the other side, for the other points of the boundary, we solve a convex problem like P2, but with some extra energy constraints, where the energy is between the two extremes. So by integrating these extra constraints and solve it again, we can find the other points of the boundary. Um, some results. In the first results, we assume a high peak power constraints, A equal to 18. So just an example here to show you that the distribution is unique, discrete, and finite. On the other uh, side, if A is very small, the distribution becomes binary, and the same distribution maximizes also the energy harvesting process. And therefore, for this case, there is no trade-off. Let's go also to the capacity region. Uh, the case without power amplifier, the case, the black with uh, um, uh, with power amplifier. So you can see that the nonlinearity, the high power amplifier nonlinearity squeeze the information energy capacity region in a significant uh, difference. On the other hand, as A becomes very small, there is not trade-off because the distribution becomes binary. And as I saw you before in the analysis, the same distribution maximizes both simultaneously. So this was just an example to show you how we use mathematical tools and information theory tools to characterize the fundamental limits of this technology. Um, the second layer is the core layer, is the signal processing layer. Here we study different problems, mainly the waveform design and the precoding design for the case of uh, multiple antenna uh, systems. So I will give you also two examples of this uh, layer. Um, firstly, I study the problem of waveform design. And here we propose a new waveform, which we call it tone index multi-sign modulation, team modulation. It's based on two uh, observation or two requirements. The first one, as I say in my introduction, is that signals like multi-sign with high peak to average power ratio are good for wireless power transfer. The second uh, observation requirement is that conventional techniques use RF chains at the receiver side, channel estimation, increase the complexity. So somehow we would like to avoid active elements at the receiver side and expressive signal processing. So based on those two requirements, we propose TIM. 
The idea is very simple. Um, the source transmits continuously multi-signed signals from a predefined set. And information is appended in the number of carriers, in the number of tones. Of course, at the receiver side, we have also a modified version of integrated receiver and non-coherent maximum likelihood detection, but low cost, let's say, signal processing in order to detect the number of carriers. Let's see here the example. The first waveform corresponds to four uh, tones, this one to eight tones, and the other one to 32 tones. First of all, you can see the high peak to average power ratio, which is good for wireless power transfer. And selected one waveform per time symbol, we can convey log to three bits per um, uh, transmission. Of course, at the receiver side, you get energy since we transmit multi-sign uh, tone signals. And using some signal processing that I will mention in, the, in later, you can detect the number of carriers and therefore uh, information. So this is the receiver side. Yes. Yes, if it's possible. Yeah, if you have Acrobat. Yeah, because I, unfortunately, is is a mess all the math here. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Okay. Which slide? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. So you see that my slides are good quality. <laughs> <laughs> I spent time to to design the figures. Okay. So um, so I am somewhere here in the leak layer. So we study this uh, team um, waveform. This is the receiver, as you can see, consists mainly from passive elements. Uh, at the out of the diode, we have two branches, the classical energy transfer branch, and then we have the information transfer, consists of an envelope detector. At the output, we get some samples, and a vector of K samples is given, is given to this block for the modulation. Um, let's uh, describe a little the system model. The source transmit N tones in a given bandwidth. Delta F is the intercarrier frequency spacing. In case that there is zero facing arrays between the tones, the received signal get this uh, shape. And as you can see, the information is uh, given at the envelope of the received signal. This is the reason that we extract this information by using this envelope detector. At the output, we get the samples and then we apply the algorithm that I will show you later. For the energy harvesting, we use this physics diode model. We can prove that consists of the two terms. The second term, which is a nonlinear term, is a function of the number of tones. And as the number of tones increase, we can see that we enhance the energy harvesting. Then we apply a maximum likelihood um, non-coherent uh, uh, detection on the receiver side for the information transfer. I will skip, of course, the math. I will add just to let you know that using mathematics, we are able, and probability theory, we are able to characterize the pairwise error probability and using the union bound, the final performance. And here, just some results. Um, the proposed scheme for different numbers of, um, of uh, predefined sets. Uh, one uh, result important here is that our scheme uh, outperforms another scheme that exists in the literature, which uh, where information is abandoned in the uh, distinct values of peak to average power ratio has been uh, proposed by Korea. And the team scheme, you can see that uh, outperforms. Here you can see uh, the performance for another set of uh, waveforms. But again, this is the basic message that we arrive to convey information and energy with passive elements and by transmitting all the time multi-sign signals that are good for wireless power transfer performance. Another problem also that we've discussed in this layer is the problem of precoding. And specifically, the example that I selected here to present you is precoding when RF 
exposure constraints are taken into, into account. As you know, our wireless power transfer propagates RF. Therefore, we need to be a little careful with the health issues. RF exposure mainly refers to two constraints, the maximum permissible exposure and the specific adjustment rate, SAR, which is the rate of energy absorption per unit mass at a specific location in the tissue and is measured in watt per kilogram. In case that we have multiple antennas, experimental results show that SAR depends on the phase shifts between the antennas. Therefore, mathematically can be uh, modeled as a quadratic constraint. Let's see now the details of this um, RF exposure um, um, dowling problem. We have a transmitter with multiple antennas and multiple uh, receivers which would like to get information energy spontaneously using the power splitting technique. The transmitter generate um, um, K beams. PK is the transmit power for the K beam, WK the beamforming vector, and the receiver side rho K is the splitting factor. Um, Let's see the system model, YK, and also I would like to mention the transmitter is characterized by multiple SAR constraints because each part of the body has a different value of, of SAR. This is the reason that we, uh, we have multiple SAR constraints. The motivation, for example, is the body networks. We can think a body network where an access point is responsible for the information uh, transfer and the con uh, information connectivity of the network. So you can imagine, for example, this type of setups here. So let's see here the system model. YK is a signal. You can see the useful information, the interference from the other beams and the Gaussian noise. PK is the total received power. We don't, we don't need here to distinguish between information and interference in both in convey energy. Gamma K is the um, SNS, uh, signal to interference and noise ratio. We model an extra noise here from the conversion of the RF to baseband. And PKS is the harvesting, which as you can see here, we apply a nonlinear function to the input of the rectenna. And then we introduce a very interesting optimization problem where we try to maximize as much as possible the received signal to interfere the noise ratio and then it is the harvesting um, given a power constraint. In the signal processing uh, literature, this is called a balanced optimization problem. So here is the, the formulation using an auxiliary variable T, which is embedded in the two constraints. We have also the uh, SAR constraints and the power constraint. This is a complicated problem, but we can prove that it's associated with a power minimization problem. Therefore, we focus on the second problem and solving this one and through bisection and iterations, we can go back to the original problem. So we focus to this power minimization problem, parameter of interest, the splitting factor, WK, the beamforming vector, and PK, the transmit power. Uh, firstly, we solve it for fixed W. So we study some well-known beforming vector, such as the MRT, the zero forcing, the regularized zero forcing. By integrating this um, WK in the problem, the problem becomes a second-order cone program, um, is a well-known family of convex optimization can be solved. And therefore, we study another a type of fixed beforming, which is a linear combination, a positive linear combination between zero forcing and MRT. Um, the motivation of this scheme is that zero forcing cancel out the cross interference is a very good um, design for information transfer. On the other hand, MRT uh, just in, increase a uh, generate a lot of radiation because just try to um, boost the, the main link. Therefore, it will be interesting for wireless power transfer. This is the reason by this uh, Positive, character, positive combination, we can find some nice balance between the two extremes. Again, the problem can be solved uh, with convex optimization. And finally, we attack the original problem where the beamforming vector is taken into account as well. And using uh, rank one relaxation, we can provide an SDP solution. Uh, let's see here some example. Okay, I will skip, I mean, the, the details of the, of the simulation just to give you the key idea. This figure is the minimum achievable signal to interference and noise, and, uh, noise ratio and energy harvesting ratio. Um, this is the performance when SAR constraints are not taken into account. Of course, this is the best. What is happening if SAR is taken into account? Uh, with the yellow, this is the proposed SDP solution. Um, this is with uh, the light blue is the linear combination. Um, and, um, and you can see the other, the zero forcing, the other schemes that I just uh, described you. And very interesting, uh, a very interesting remark here is that the proposed scheme outperforms this back off solution. Back off solution is what exists now in, in our uh, mobile phones, where SAR constraint is taken into account at the uh, power level. 
So we design the system without SAR constraints, and thus we take into account SAR at the power up the power level. So this is called back of solution, as you can see, provides. Uh, a, a smaller performance. So this is very interesting because we study a sweep system where RF constraints, SAR constraints, are taken into account in the waveform design, the pre-coding design. And this gives the extra uh, uh, performance in terms of, uh, of back-off. Uh, and also here we compare in terms of power consumption and we have some uh, other important uh, interesting remarks. Okay, so this, this was some example of the work that we are doing at the signal processing layer. And we study, as I said, the waveform from one side and the precoding from the other side. Then, then next, we move to the next layer, is a system level analysis, is the macroscopic um, analysis of the problem using tools from stochastic geometry. The selected example here uh, is the retrodirective energy beamforming. Energy beamforming is a very important tool in order to combat the path loss and increase the energy harvesting efficiency of the system. But as you know, energy beamforming means that we um, steer, we focus the transmitted signal to the receiver direction, and somehow we need to know at least the direction of the receiver. So we need some type of channel state information. Most of the cases, channel state information is given through a feedback, which increases complexity for these wireless power transfer systems where, uh, where uh, efficiency is very low. So we try here to propose an energy beamforming scheme, which is completely passive, without active, uh, let's say, transmission of uh, operation. We combine two tools, two technologies, retrodirectivity at the transmitter side and uh, backscattering at the receiver side. Okay, what is retrodirectivity? Is the ability of a multiple um, antenna system to um, transmit a signal at the um, direction of the arrival. So it's like an antenna which behaves like a mirror. On the other hand, backscattering is a technology that we use, for example, in the RFID, where just we modulate through antenna mismatic the reflected signal, and again, is passive. So we combine this technology, retrodirectivity at the transmitter side, backscattering at the receiver side, in order to achieve energy performing. I will give you the key idea. We have a transmitter with multiple antennas. We have a circle of radius rho. Um, energy receivers are located according to a homogeneous Poisson point process. This is the reason that we study the problem for system level analysis. The number of antennas is huge, is M, much larger than K, the number of receivers. Therefore, we can use some simple expression for the massive MIMO literature to analyze. Um, B, B, uh, beta I is a reflection coefficient for the I energy, re energy receiver, which is backscattering. And we, of course, model path loss and array fading. So the, pro the protocol or the scheme have two phases, it has two phases. In the first phase is called backscattering phase. Um, the source enforces the energy receivers to signalize their direction. Specifically, the transmitter transmit a very short and modulated single tone. This signal arrives at the energy receivers, the energy receivers are backscattered, and therefore reflect back the signal with a reflection coefficient beta i. And this is the received signal at the, at the multiple at the at the access point. Whereas you can see, we model the cascaded channel. The exponent here is doubled because the signal goes down and uh, returned. So we model all of this phenomena. Yt is a received signal. The second phase is called energy beamforming phase, uh, using the principle of retrodirectivity. We generate an energy signal, which is uh, just a conjugate, phase conjugate of the received signal. So you are doing this conjugation and we transmit the energy signal. And using an energy harvesting model, which is linear in order to simplify analysis, we have this harvesting energy at the I receiver and consists of two components. A component, which as you can see, depends only on the location. We call it omnidirectional component. And another component, which depends on the reflection coefficients of all the participating um, energy receivers. And, and uh, inspired by this component, we propose different uh, protocols, different techniques that achieve different energy harvesting performances. For example, we have the distance inversion backscattering, where we enforce this component, this term, to be equal for all uh, devices. So through the uh, distance inversions, we achieve a type of energy harvesting fairness, let's say. Um, on the other hand, we have full backscattering, beta equal to one for all uh, receivers. Simple um, complexity because we don't need any 
Sigil Aligor coordination. And we have here some very interesting asymptotic results. When L go to infinity, which means that the network is very dense, this term vanishes to zero. On the other hand, if, if the lambda is goes to zero, so we have the, the opposite behavior, the performance is very close to perfect beamforming. It's like we know the channel of the transmitter will be formed. So we have these extreme cases. We have also some other schemes like binary backscattering where beta i get binary values based on the distance or some probabilistic uh, criteria. And finally, we have the harvesting target backscattering. This is another scheme where we enforce that this component, this uh, retrodirected component is larger than gamma. And this problem is like, um, um, is like power control in interference channel. And as we know, this problem is very well studied in the literature and admits also a, a, a distributed solution is the well-known focini milzacic algorithm where using these updates, we can approximate the optimal uh, solution. Um, here are some examples. Average harvesting energy versus transmit power with the black line is the perfect, is the benchmark where we know the channel transmitter side. Here is the random beamforming without any CSI. So this is the two extremes. And here you can see for this specific setup, the red line here is the full feedback. So beta equal to one. We can achieve a performance very close to the perfect feedback. Uh, while the distance inversion provides something in the middle, but on the other side provides uh, fairness. Here we focus on the other scheme is the HTB, the harvest the scheme, the harvesting target backscattering. And you can see the behavior of the systems uh, for different um, uh, scenarios. And the basic message is that the percentage of energy receivers that satisfy this threshold decrease as the threshold and the, the density uh, increase. So this was just an example of what we are doing at the system level by taking into account the randomness and uh, uh, study, for example, the effect of uh, multi-user interference. Uh, as, I, as I promised, we have also another layer, which is the experimental layer, where we try to close the gap between theory and practice, and some of the results that uh, we study theoretically to experimentally um, uh, prove. So the example here that I present you is a new waveform, which is a frequency domain sweep, which superimpose a communication waveform with a multi-sign signal. I recall you multi-sign signals, high peak coverage, power ratio, good for wireless power transfer. So here we try to superimpose with a communication, a classical, a conventional communication waveform, a multi-sign signal. Of course, very critical parameter is the location of this uh, multi-sign signal. Normally, we locate the waveforms either at the spectrum nulls of the information signal or in the low power subband uh, regime. Okay, this is uh, depends on the parameter of the threshold lambda, which is a very critical parameter where we can um, um, find the potential location of the energy tones. So in this case, in the same time with the communication waveform, we transmit an energy signal, which is, it is transparent to the communication uh, waveform. Um, we experimentally test uh, the, the problem using our expertise on software defined radio. We have a USRP 2920 here, behaves as a transmitter and receiver. So we, we, there are two ports here. We have a power cast is a commercial power uh, rectenna, not something customized. And, the, and this microchip allow us to get the values from the power cast and, prov and uh, uh, project to the lab view to the, to the screen. So we have the, the distance between power cast and transmitter 30 centimeters and change this distance in order to find the effect of, of, the, of, the, um, of the geometric location. So some results, first of all, the performance is similar Either we put the energy, the energy tones or not, the performance is the same. This is the reason that here I focus only on the harvesting perfor performance. 30 centimeters is the distance, the maximum, five centimeters the smaller, and we have different setups. The first one is conventional, no energy uh, tones. So the energy harvesting, the power cast get, get energy only from the communication uh, waveform. This is provides the lowest performance. And then we transmit a single tone, two tones, three tones, mainly are the nulls of the uh, transmitted signal. And as you can see, the energy harvesting performance uh, is boosted, in, in, is enhanced. 
And the basic reason is what I said in my introduction, high peak to, upper, high peak to average power ratio is translated to a better performance for the reason that I mentioned. So here was just an example of what we try to do in the lab and experimentally uh, show some of the results that we observe in the theory. Okay, so let's conclude. Um, in, in, in recent, in, uh, in recent, let's say, um, engineering systems, of course, there is an, an effort to co-design information and energy. I can mention here several examples, smart grids, harvesting, energy harvesting, green radio, power line communication, and of course, our wireless power communication is one of technology uh, of this uh, family. I envision that this technology will be an enabler for the upcoming 6G systems. For example, here, this is an example, whereas you can see the communication infrastructure in the same time is power infrastructure. The base station are, can transmit information and energy or both. So transmit energy or, or information is just two extremes. So we can envision that the base station or the access point could uh, uh, connect and also transmit energy in order to power small sensor networks. We can find a lot of potential application, Internet of Things, of course, which is the natural application, consumer electronics, implantable devices are some areas that already this technology has impact, and also space technology. For example, ESA um, use this technology for satellite or for uh, uh, planetary exploitation. So th there are these technologies already in, in the activity of ESA and, uh, and the space technology. And to some future direction, just to finish, this is a new technology with a lot of open questions, theoretical advances. I just mentioned some of them. We need mathematical models for rectangular topologies that take into account the nonlinearities or the memory of the circuit. The memory is very important and current models are not able to capture this memory effect. Fundamental limits using uh, information theory, signal design, new shift as its sector, and of course, take into account safety issues like SAR that I mentioned in my examples. Uh, potential application of interest, we need to think of potential applications, wireless sensor network, machine type communications, wireless backscatter communications, and also, also what about the application of this technology to 6G network, where we have some very interesting tools, such as very ultra intensifications, ultra massive MIMO, and very recently IRS, I think is the next uh, talk, where IRS can facilitate also uh, SWIP and wireless power transfer as well. How to implementation, um, this um, uh, technology is very interdisciplinary. As you can see here, I study a lot of examples for multiple layers, but really we need some assistance and uh, collaboration with people from hardware. And also machine learning for wireless power communications. The main reason for this is that the mathematical models that we have now are very simplistic, too simplistic, are not taking into account mismatch, phenomena, parasitic effects, frequency modulation, the impact of the RC, as I mentioned. So all the models that exist currently are very simple. And this is exactly the role of machine learning, of deep learning, where we can, um, using autoencoders or other machine learning tools, to uh, remove blocks and based on the data to design a, a swift uh, system. Okay, so this was my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yanni. Great talk. Very rich. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? From the audience in the room? Yes, yes, yes Petra. I think I don't need it, but anyway. Uh, thank you for the talk, uh, Yanis. Uh, just a question. I think you mentioned that the, at the end, isn't, isn't there a lot of non-linearity at these circuits, because when you do this multi-tone uh, peak power, then you're entering into regime which is not normally linear. So have you observed that? So you mean about the, uh, the phenomena here, yeah? Yeah, about but the, also the, at the receiver. the demonstration. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, in, in, with this technology, with these, these USRPs, we are not really able to see the, the because we use commercial uh, rectenna, so we're not going very deep to the circuit. Mm -hmm. So just we observe the harvesting and just we, we get the, the value. So we're, with this setup here, we're not able to see the, okay. the nonlinearities. So we need to go deeper to the circuit. Okay. But if you go to simulation like ADS and stay at this level, of course, you can, you can see these uh, nonlinearities. Okay. 
the, mis the magic phenomena and so on. So all the mathematical models are, are inspired by these uh, nonlinearities. But experimentally, we need some other setups. I see. Thanks. Any other questions? Yes. Hello. Uh, I want to ask about uh, link layer design. That, uh, about said that rank one uh, solution. Uh, I want to know that uh, the rank uh, makes a problem non-convex. Of course, so of course. But we prove solve? that uh, there is a rank one solution then. So we confirm that we relax this constraint, we solve the SDP, okay. but at the end with some theory as well, we prove that there is a, a rank one solution. So uh, which paper of you uh, is related? To uh, this is a transaction com. I can share the, the exact uh, uh, reference at the end. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any questions do we have in the chat? Do we know? No question in the chat. Okay. If not, thanks uh, once again. Okay. Thank you very Mr. much. Thanks a lot.